we will start this. Uh, good evening to you all and thank you for joining us in today's webinar at Lane. It's my pleasure to anchor this webinar. It's the sixth of our MBA for Africa webinar in the year 2020. And we are more than excited to have the Northeastern University, that's the Dear Moore, Marke Dear Moore a more McKean University or Business School, I beg your pardon. But we'll delve into that a little bit, um, a little bit into the webinar. But for now, we just want to talk a bit about Lane itself and just introduce Lane to the guests who are not a member of, of our community right now. As you can see on the screen, right now our focus is to increase Africa's representation in global MBA programs. One of the recurring themes that I've had with my friends who are currently in MBA program is that Africa's representation as a continent could be a lot better. When you think of other countries with comparatively the same number of people, uh, the same population as Africa, you would see that Africa could do a lot better, even as a continent in many of the global MBA program. We think that is very important because it's a vision to build an economically and politically inclusive Africa that is basically self-perpetuating. I would hand over to Franklin to talk about what our community looks like and how you can be a part of us. Franklin. Hi, Sam. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm so happy to be here and to talk a little bit about Lane. So for those of you who are joining us for the first time, Lane is a virtual city, and that is how we look at it. Um, like Sam said, we are focused on increasing Africa's representation in global MBA programs. But at the core of our goal is to help to build an economically and politically inclusive Africa. So we have members from um, different parts of Africa, from Kenya, from Nigeria, from Ghana, and we have a very diverse team. Um, most of our members are from diverse um, areas of work. We have people in the financial services, we have people from nonprofits, we have people in banking, we have people in technology. So it is really diverse. And our plan is to help um, equip young Africans to identify and support each other with opportunities in our career as we um, attempt to get an MBA to improve Africa as a whole. So to be part of our community, we have a form and um, shortly after this introduction, I'll be jumping the link to our form. We also have um, a link tree um, resource center where we have resources ranging from past webinars, videos, um, podcasts that we call LeanPods and um, where we speak about different issues from our application portal to, you know, working on your recommendation and your essays to ensure that you put the best foot forward in applying for the MBA. So I say um, a big welcome to you all. And um, we have other things um, like our aims and objectives, you know, which, like I said, empowering Africans strengthening, strengthening commun communal communication, um, catalyzing Africa's development, bridging the gap between, you know, the, the African MBA um, present ecosystem and the, the future one that we want, and basically helping to pay it forward for people who are coming behind us. So our, our strategic goal is to empower 1,000 people, and our guiding principles include selflessness. We want people who put others first, people who are diverse in their thinking, creative people, and generally champions in their own right. So we encourage everyone to join us. Um, shortly after, I'll drop the link, and you can access our resources. I hope to see you um, soon. Enjoy the webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Franklin, for that wonderful presentation. Without any further ado, we'll delve right into today's webinar with Alexandra Monroe of the Diamond McKean School of Business. And uh, she's apologizing for not being able to turn on our camera because of some technical glitch. So we hope that we'll be able to have a wonderful presentation in spite of that. But here's a wonderful and beautiful picture of her. Um, I've met her once and she's a very lovely lady and I'm so excited to have her here. Alexandra, welcome. Thank you so much, Sam. What a wonderful introduction. Thank you, Sam Franklin. It's an honor to be here today. 
Um, and I appreciate all of you taking the time today to listen into this webinar. Um, like Sam said, this is not one of the, maybe the common topics discussed, but this is something that I actually asked Sam if we could talk about today. Um, just because I think it's so important in today's business world to have this integration of tech and business. And this is something that has really become one of Northeastern's core competencies. So I look forward to talking about our program today um, and answering any questions that you have about Northeastern, about um, our application process, or about anything in between. So I appreciate the questions in advance um, that you had, had asked, and hopefully I'll be able to cover everything. But again, if I don't, please definitely feel free to stop me. And Sam, I'm just going to ask you really quick, can you see the presentation on your end? Does it look like a presentation? I just want to make sure I'm, I'm on the right screen. Thumbs up. Looks good. Oh, we can see it now. Yep. Yeah. So great. Okay. <laughs> now, uh, delving, delving right into today's webinar and, and the topic which you already talked a little bit about. At the turn of the decade, it seemed that tech was the only thing that could sustain our economy. And the only thing that did a pretty good job of making the economy continue despite um, the very devastating effect of COVID. I mean, our, 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 our artists with all the families who've lost one or two people in this webinar, we understand it's a very tragic experience for people and we really appreciate that. But I mean, we, we really understand that, but we would like, would like to delve into seeing our tech as continuing to drive the economy from the end of the, from the start of the, I mean, from the start of 1990 down to 2019 and down to 2000. The question I'm basically looking forward to actually here is, how do you see business schools in particular, the Dear Mocking uh, MBA program. How do you see business schools responding to this trend? Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, so what I'm gonna cover in this presentation um, is one main topic that every business is now a tech business. If you're looking at Uber, which you think of as maybe a ride share company, it's really driven by tech. Um, if you look at Amazon, which is a retail company, it's driven by tech. Um, so no matter the business that you're looking at, having those technical core competencies, um, we see at Demore McKim as being those strengths that are going to not only help you stand out in the bunch when looking for a job, but will sustain you in your job and in your career in the long term. Um, we don't see tech going anywhere, um, and we think that technology and data literacy in particular are really those key competencies that are, that are going to help you in today's business world. So um, what we've actually done is, is kind of change our whole curriculum to focus on these topics um, and infuse technology and interdisciplinary learning within the curriculum. Right, so I, my next question is coincidentally the, the, the title of your presentation. So maybe after I ask you, just delve right into your presentation and carry on with that. <laughs> the question is this, so how should an MBA student or applicant look to leverage this trend, the growing trend between rising application of tech and business and that blurring boundaries that used to exist for a very long time? Sure, I personally think it's by getting this education. Um, by getting those skill sets that are going to help you in today's business world. Um, I think one thing that stands out about our program that I'll definitely dive into a little bit deeper um, is real world experience as well. So it's important to get that education, but it's also important to work in the industry and get that hands-on experience. Um, so within our program, we offer what's called a corporate residency, which is an MBA level internship. Um, where you actually get to take what you learn in the classroom and apply it to a real world experience. So I think having the, the real world experience, adding it to your resume and utilizing it um, when you're applying to jobs is definitely um, what, what students should be focusing on and, and hopefully kind of utilizing as they um, finish up a program and move on to full-time employment. Great, so I'm gonna kick things off um, so, and again, if there's any questions throughout the presentation, please feel free um, to 
to shoot us a message. I'm going to go over all questions at the end of the presentation as well. Um, so just a quick overview of what I'm going to be discussing today. A quick introduction, although Sam's already given a great introduction, and thank you again for that. Um, we're going to talk about humanics. Uh, so what that is, what, it's a, a term that's really been coined by Northeastern. Um, we're going to talk about the MBA curriculum, and then we're going to talk about something special called the MBA Act, which is a new offering at Northeastern. Um, and then get into the nitty gritty of admissions and next steps at um, Northeastern. So quick introduction, my name is Alexander Monroe. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions um, at Northeastern's DeMoor McKim School of Business. I focus in on our full-time MBA program specifically. Um, this is my contact information, so feel free to take a screenshot and I'll add it to the chat section as well. But um, I'm really your liaison throughout the process. So if you do decide to, nor to apply to Northeastern um, or you're thinking about applying to Northeastern and maybe want to connect with a current student or an alumni, or a faculty member or talk one on one about your own experience. Um, I am the person to help you throughout this process. So I look forward to working with all of you closely um, if you do decide to apply to Northeastern. So I want to kick things off with just a quick quote. Um, I, I hate to read off a slide, but I think this is really important to today's uh, topic. So today, every company is a technology company with machine intelligence and data analytics continuously redefining how, when, and where we do business, you need to, have, to act quickly and nimbly, learn to dis distinguish hype from trend, and manage technology-driven change before change manages you. So in essence, you really need to be robot-proof. So being robot-proof is, is actually a term that's coined by Northeastern's president, Joseph Aoun, um, who actually wrote a book on robot-proofing. So at Northeastern, education prepared students uh, to be robot proof by offering them what we call a humanics education. So we prepare students to utilize a creative mindset with mental elasticity to invent, discover, create something valuable to society. So what is humanics? It's this lovely term that, that we use so much within our curriculum. Um, humanics is really the integration of human, technological, and data literacy. So you'll see this in the Venn diagram here. Um, so at Northeastern, and really specifically at DeMoor McKim School of Business, we infuse our curriculum with humanics point of view by focusing on three interdisciplinary learning literacies. So first, what we do is teach technology and the tr technological trends and the value of those things in the classroom. We do that through experiential opportunities as well. Second, we provide hands-on experiences with data and digital tools that students will use in a modern business. And third, we create opportunities to explore what makes humans unique. So where these three learnings converge is the, found the foundation of humanics here at Northeastern. Um, and if you've heard anything about Northeastern, I'm sure you've heard of our co-op program, which is kind of um, in the DNA of Northeastern's um, kind of program overall. Um, at the graduate level, we call that co-op a, a corporate residency, but basically what it is is experiential learning. Um, so utilizing what you take in the classroom or what you learn in the classroom and applying it to a real world job. Um, actually stopping what you're doing in the classroom and going off into, uh, into a business and, and applying what you're doing. Um, so both experiential learning and humanics are these two major frameworks which we base our curriculum um, and everything we do off of. So the full-time MBA, we have two distinct options. We have our traditional full-time MBA program where students get to pick two concentrations, both in business. And then we have an MBA X option where students get to pick one concentration in business and one interdisciplinary concentration. Um, so as we're going through, what I'm going to do is focus first on the full time and then move on to the second, uh, move on to the MBA X computer science. Uh, or MBA X, excuse me, there's three options. <laughs> Um, so first to the full-time MBA, um, what we did about two years ago was actually kind of blow up our, our curriculum. Um, what we wanted to do was ensure that students graduating from our program are, are prepared to learn um, or prepared to work, excuse me, in today's business world. 
Um, that means being data centric. That means being able to utilize technology. That means being able to have non-traditional business skills. Um, so what we did was actually partner with our corporate partners, with our faculty and with our alumni. And we asked them the question. We, we understand that they're industry experts. And so we, we posed the question to them. We said, what will make our students stand out from the bunch and, and be ready to, to work successfully in today's business world? Um, so what they came back to us with was the fact that our students need to have, like I said, non-traditional business skills. They need to have more than one core competency and they need to have a global perspective because we work in a, a global environment, right? A global economy. Um, so with that feedback, what we did was actually take our curriculum, which used to be one full academic year of core curriculum classes, and we condense that core to one semester. So I'm gonna to click to the next screen so you can see um, what our, our semesters look like or an overview of the program overall. So you'll see fall one and fall two. That's the condensed core where, where you'll take all of your core curriculum classes. Um, so condensing it into one semester actually gave our students the time and opportunity now to have two concentrations versus just one. Getting back to um, the, the fact of having more than one um, core competency post-graduation. Post we answered that question. Um, the second was having non-traditional business skills. So within our traditional full-time MBA program, again, with this program having two concentrations, both in business, we do require a minimum of six credit hours or about two courses to be taken outside of the School of Business. Still at Northeastern, um, but now you are, our students can take maybe a class in artificial intelligence through our College of Computer Science or take a class in data visualization through our College of Arts, Media, and Design. Um, allowing students to have skill sets that are very important to a business, um, a business career, um, but aren't traditional business skill sets, right? Um, so that will start happening in the spring semester. And I wanna focus your attention over to the concentrations as well. You'll see that four concentrations have actually been highlighted here. Um, these were added back to all of the feedback that we were getting with those, those key partners. Um, we added this that based on their feedback. So business analytics, corporate innovation and venturing, international business and leading people and organizations. These are all new to our portfolio. Um, and have actually quickly become some of our most popular concentrations. Um, I'm sure you can imagine business analytics has become <laughs> a, one of the top concentration pairings um, with, with this program, just because it, it just makes sense with every single other um, concentration, whether you're looking to get into finance or marketing or healthcare management, um, business analytics or the ability to utilize data and make business decisions really makes sense with, with all of the other concentrations. So during your fall and spring semester, you're also concurrently going to be working with our career center. Um, we offer what's called a career management class, which helps our students when it comes to things like updating their resume or fine tuning their interview skills or networking skills. Um, the career management class also brings in different panels from different industries and different companies. So you can start working on your networking. Um, so building up your network um, figuring out what companies you're really interested in and maybe what industries you're really interested in. Um, each of our students is also paired with a career advisor from the beginning of the program that will help them when it comes to placement on our corporate residency. Um, so we boast 100% placement on corporate residency or again that MBA level internship in the middle of the program, um, not only because our students work hard to find them, but our career center works very hard for our students to ensure that everyone is placed on a corporate residency. Um, so you'll see that that corporate residency starts right after your second semester, your spring semester, and typically lasts about six months. You'll come back from that corporate residency and finish up the last three semesters of your program um, and graduate within two years. Um, that two-year timeline is, is tied back to a six-month corporate residency. Oh, I just want to stop. It, it seems like um nobody can hear me i just want to check no, to we, we we can hear you i, I just think <laughs> okay. it's Sarah Muller's device he needs to log out and log in again okay sounds good thank you right. 
Um, so honing in on that corporate residency or that experiential education, um, we offer a three, six, or 12 month corporate residency. Um, I focus in on the six months because that is what the majority of our students will go off on. Um, three month is, is tied to industries like financial services or consulting. And our 12 month option is unique in the sense that if you're interested in maybe two different industries or two different companies, you have the flexibility to actually have two individual corporate residencies and really build your resume up. Um, so maybe it's working at um, PwC within business analytics, or maybe it's working at, um, let's say TJX working within their retail, um, their buying program, whatever it is, um, you have that flexibility. Um, and depending on the length of your corporate residency is the length of your program overall. Um, so this is just a quick overview of some of our sample partners. Again, this is a very quick snapshot of um, our, our corporate partners from last year. This year, with our addition of our MBAX computer science program, we're, we're anticipating seeing an addition of corporate partners um, in the tech industry. Um, and we're actually working with our, our Curry College of Computer Sciences uh, Career Center to partner with them uh, when it comes to placing our students on corporate residencies that have that integration of business and technology. So again, a very quick snapshot. Um, we have so many corporate partners, uh, but this is just highlighting some of um, the few. And you'll see that a lot of the, the focus by industry is in the healthcare, pharmaceutical, biotech, finance, and consumer product industries. Um, and that's really because of our location in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, so if you're familiar with Boston, um, you, you may know that we're kind of a hub for, for healthcare. Um, we have some of the top hospitals and insurance and pharmaceutical companies right in the heart of Boston and a little bit outside um, in some towns, uh, one in Cambridge and um, some surrounding cities as well. Um, we're also a, a hub for finance. We do have a financial district that has some of the, the top financial companies in the country um, right in our backyard. So that's why we see so much interest in so many opportunities in these industries. Um, and when we're looking by function, so what are people doing in these industries? Uh, the majority of our students are really looking into finance, marketing, and supply chain. Um, these numbers tend to fluctuate based on the class. Every class has different interests and um, goals and aspirations. So these numbers will fluctuate, um, but this is just a snapshot from our last year's class. Um, so I just want to take a, a quick pause here. That was our traditional full-time MBA program. We're going to dive quickly into the MBA X program, um, which is a full-time MBA program. You still get the same degree, um, but it's really focused on um, interdisciplinary learning. So I just want to stop very quickly to see if there's any specific questions about the traditional full-time MBA. Um, if not, I will I will move right on um, and we can always talk through at the end as well. Yeah, I, I think I think we would just take note of the questions and we can compile everything together and actually at the end. Perfect, sounds good. So let's dive into MBAX. Um, so MBAX is, a, is the brainchild of our Dean, Dean Raj Achimbadi, um, who really values the, the interdisciplinary learning. So having those non-traditional business skills. Um, so with our MBA X, our students are allowed to take one concentration. So choosing from one of our nine business concentrations. Um, and then they get to pair that with an interdisciplinary concentration. Um, so we've actually partnered with three different colleges at Northeastern. So the College of Computer Science, the College of Science and the College of Arts, Media and Design to offer MBA X Computer Science. MBAX Life Science and MBAX Design and Communication. So three different interdisciplinary options, all with many concentrations below that we're going to cover. Um, I do want to quickly read this quote from Raj um, Etchenbadi, who is our, our dean. Um, with MBAX, students can develop multifaceted perspectives by blending their business studies with other areas of expertise, such as artificial intelligence or experiential design. By connecting students across a diverse array of knowledge, we set them on a path to solving the grand challenges of our time 
driving significant impact and living more rewarding lives. So these are, this is kind of the reason that we have um, really focused on, on this learning. So the first and I think most pertinent to um, this, this presentation is MBAX Computer Science. Um, so partnering with the College of Computer Science, we now offer four concentrations. First being artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, data science, and software development. So again, you have the opportunity to pair something like artificial intelligence with finance um, or, or marketing or whatever you, you decide. Um, the good thing about our program, as you can see, it's very flexible. <laughs> Um, so how does it work? Our MBAX computer science is unique in the sense that it does and is the only offering that, that does have prerequisites. Um, so if you're looking to dive into this offering, you would need to have an undergraduate degree in computer science or have completed a list of prerequisite courses in order to participate in the two-year program. Um, that program does include a corporate residency as well, just like our traditional full-time MBA. Um, if you are like, oh, I, I really want to do MBA X, I, I, I know AI or software development is really going to set me apart and is something I'm looking to do um, and learn about, but I don't have those prerequisites. Totally fine. You're, you're absolutely able to participate. The only difference is you have to participate in a one-year bridge program that's offered by the College of Computer Science. And the reason being is because the courses that are offered through this interdisciplinary concentration are truly master level uh, computer science courses. Um, and we want to ensure that you're successful in those courses. So we do need you to have uh, a certain level of understanding and education within computer science to be successful in these concentration courses. Um, so these are the two paths. This, um, the, the bridge program adds one year. So it's a total of a three-year program. The, um, the program without bridge is a two-year program. The second offering is MBA X Life Sciences. And through our College of Science, we're offering an MBA X Biotechnology concentration and a Bioinformatics concentration. Um, luckily, these two offerings do not require prerequisites, so you're able to dive right into these concentrations. And the third MBA X option is through our College of Arts, Media, and Design, and is a design and communications concentration. Um, through this, we offer four specific concentrations, media innovation and advocacy, data visualization, game design and analytics, and experience design. Um, these four concentrations also do not require any prerequisites. Um, and I do want to highlight all MBAX programs do offer a corporate residency as well. So your ability to, to have that data, or excuse me, that business intersection with your interdisciplinary learning apply to a real world job. So you can really kind of solidify that learning. So these are our options. These are all of our full-time MBA options. Um, the next thing to think about is applying. Um, so when we're looking at our admissions, what we're looking for in a candidate is somebody with a strong academic ability. Um, we're gonna be looking at your prior education, so your undergraduate transcripts and anything above and beyond that. Um, we do, usually in a, in a pre-COVID world, we required the GMAT and GRE. I will note right here um, that Northeastern is test optional this year, so the GMAT and GRE are no longer required, um, but we still accept them. So if you choose to add them to your application, we will certainly review them um, and it will be a part of our admissions decision. Um, we're also going to be looking at your work experience. So what have you done? Um, what kind of roles have you held? What kind of work have you done within those roles? Have you taken on leadership uh, positions? Have you um, been able to initiate change? Have you utilized data or technology within your roles um, to make your job uh, or, or company stronger? Um, what have you done in those positions? And what will you bring to the classroom? So we'd love to hear as students value add. What is that something special about yourself um, that you'll be able to bring and share with your cohort? And lastly, what is your potential as a business leader? So we kind of covered this already, but I'll just highlight this again. Application requirements. 
Um, our application is done online. So if you go into our website, you'll see future student in the upper right hand corner. If you click on that, the first option is um, is going to be our apply now button. So you'll go there and it'll bring you to our application system, which is called apply yourself. Um, we'll ask for a personal statement, all your transcripts starting from undergraduate and above, two letters of recommendation, um, your GMAT or GRE if you need it, uh, TOEFL or IELTS um, if you have not taken uh, uh, your undergraduate degree or um, whatever degree you've taken um, has not been taught in English, um, a resume, and then an interview, which is by invitation only. So all of this together will allow you to have a complete application. Um, and then we, we typically turn around answers at the latest within two months from each um, application deadline. Our next application deadline is October 15th. So that's round one. Um, January 20th will be our round two applications, and then we'll have two, two uh, rounds after that um, as well. So happy to share that information. Um, but that is it. That is my presentation. I want to open it up to Q&A. Um, and as we do that, I'm just going to leave it on this screen, our contact information for myself. Um, please feel free again to reach out to me at any point. If you have questions about the program, Northeastern, um, your, your application, whatever it may be, uh, please feel free to reach out. Thank you very much for a wonderful presentation. And before I hand <laughs> over to Ola doing to handle the question and answer session, I just got a couple of questions, just two of them that I'd like to immediately ask to follow up on the presentation. First of all, I'd like to say very big well done to Northeastern University for, I've not seen so many MBA programs latch on to that growing trend and make it into the kind of programs and curriculums that you've created. So well done to the school on that. Now, my question is centered around COVID. How has the school responded to COVID with its first year MBA and its second MBA students, especially international students? Sure, that's a very important question. So thank you for, for asking it. Um, our response to COVID has been a modality we're calling NU Flex, which allows students to participate in classes both online uh, or virtually and in person. Um, so for students who are international, who are not able to come to the United States because um, the, the uh, visas aren't being offered at this point and are not able to get uh, maybe an appointment through their embassy, um, they are participating in our program virtually. Um, so over the summer before the class started, Northeastern actually invested a lot of time and money to ensure every classroom was equipped with the technology um, to, to offer all classes virtually. So that, that meant adding um, top of the line um, video cameras so we could stream each class, uh, video, um, sound, uh, all, all of the technology needed, as well as creating actually a dashboard and a, and a portal for students to access. Um, for students who are able to be in, in Boston and who want to participate in person, um, all students are actually required to be tested three times a week in order to, uh, excuse me, three times a week and have a negative test result in order to be um, allowed in the classroom. Um, additionally, we have capped our classes at one third capacity to ensure social distancing is possible. Um, so you do have to sign up for a seat in the class, which is on a rotational basis as well. Um, so faculty and staff, staff as well need to be tested at least two times a week as well. So we are, are not in the camp of let's test if you're symptomatic. We are very much in the camp of let's test everybody very frequently to make sure that everyone is safe on campus. And if you do have a negative, negative test, um, you are not allowed in the classroom or on campus. We do ask uh, students to quarantine um, themselves. So we are working very, very hard to ensure the safety of our students um, and really so our students can participate in, in class so we don't have to shut our campus down. Um, but we want to make sure that, that we're doing it safely and that we're, we're doing this sustainably so we can continue on with uh, the process and hopefully we'll, we'll continue to be kind of a leader in, in this as we um, have seen we've been able to kind of lead the way um, in, in this testing and, and preparedness. 
Thank you very much. And I must say, you guys do not cease to impress me with some of the things that you do. I think that's great being able to move your international students online. My second question and last for the session or for the section of this session is, and this is one question many people constantly ask. They see people go to the MBA program and become programs manager at Microsoft or at big tech companies. And the question they ask themselves is, but I don't have a tech role. Now, how can an MBA student from a non-tech background get tech roles after the MBA program? Sure, I think the, the best way is to get their foot in the door through an internship. Um, I think having a resume that has a bit of experience on it will help students get their foot in the door for a full-time role. Um, it's certainly a benefit that our, our career center is working very closely with our College of Computer Sciences Career Center um, to utilize their partnerships with their corporate partners to open up doors. Um, but I think having that corporate residency, which allows students to really kind of practice their skill sets and um, again, gain that experience and, and apply it to the resume is really important. Um, but I also want to highlight that our, our career <laughs> So sorry, um, our career center is actually a benefit for life. So um, you can come back to us at any point in your career as an alumni um, and say, listen, I really wanna get into this company. I've had five years of experience under my belt and I'm ready to pivot or I'm ready to um, get into that C-suite position. Um, you can come back to our career center and we actually have somebody dedicated in our office who works specifically with alumni. Um, and are able to utilize the network of 50,000 plus alumni that we have um, in our college. So I, I think there's just so many different pathways um, that our students can utilize to get in their foot in the door at these, these um, big companies, especially within the tech industry. Thank you very much for that response. And without any further ado, I'll add over to Alado to handle the question and answer session. If you have any questions, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask in person. It does a lot of great things for you. Uh, one, Alexander would be able to even note your voice and it makes it more lively for a lot of us. The second thing I also want to quickly mention is there's an attendance list that I will be sharing with Alexander after this webinar. So feel free to enter your name and email address in that below. A lot doing over to you. And Sam, if I could just interject one small thing, if you do enter your name and email address, um, I will follow up with an email with an application fee waiver code to save you $100 so you don't have to pay those. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for that. So you guys, you add that, right? Aladoui, over to you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Samuel and Alexandra. So I would like to ask them what, um, what are the, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you loud and clear. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to ask you in terms of an application, what are the factors that if somebody's my like this. I don't know. Okay. So the question is, what are the, the parts of the application? Is that correct? Yeah. So what are the factors that you look out for in a potential candidate? And yeah, basically, how can um, prospective students' applications stand out? What are the factors that you look out for, basically? Sure. So these are kind of the main things that we're looking for. So academic ability, we're looking at your work experience, we're looking at what you're going to bring to the classroom as a contributor um, and your potential as a business leader. So we look at um, your, your transcripts, your resume, your, your personal statement and your letters of recommendation. Um, one piece of advice that I, I love to give to students um, is because I get the question a lot, how do I stand out on my application? Um, other than having strong academic background, um, a, a strong resume, strong letters of recommendation, um, which are all at this point really kind of out of your control, right? They are what they are. Um, it's the essay. 
the essay is that piece of the application where you can really kind of shine and, and show not only your, um, your writing skills, but also tell your story. Um, what is that value add that you're going to bring to the classroom? What are those experiences that you have had that are going to make you a strong business leader? Um, what will you bring to this cohort? What is, again, that value add that you can bring? So I think that's one area of the application um, that you really have the opportunity to customize um, and have that, that opportunity to, to stand out. Great question. Okay. It. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I would like to ask them um, another question as regards them um, GRE, GMAT that is with this year. So how can so I is that does that in any way affect the, the chances of, of any perspective student getting admitted? So would you say that if you can take the test, it's still better for you to do that? Sure. Great. I don't know if you get my question. Yeah, so um, because we are test optional, um, it you will not be penalized if you don't take the test and add it to your application. Um, we'll, we will make an admissions decision based on the rest of your application. So we'll put a heavier emphasis on your transcript, your resume, your personal statements, um, and your essay. Did I already say essay? I apologize. The rest of your application. <laughs> Um, so it, it's not going to penalize you or hurt you if you don't take it. Um, but having said that, if you if you do choose to take it, we will add that to our admissions decision um, and we'll, we'll utilize that when making our decision. So it's completely up to you what you want to do. Um, this is completely based on a response to COVID as well, just because so many testing centers have been closed. Um, we wanted to ensure that students had the, the ability to still apply um, with that, that piece taken off of it because it's really not um, not fair if, if students can't take it um, that they can't apply. So um, if you don't, we'll, we'll focus on the rest of your application. If you do, it will be part of our admissions decision. Okay, thank you very much for that. Thank you. So I wanted to ask him, um, the question I have is um, as regards um, years of experience. So what's like the minimum, is there a minimum um, number of experience that prospective yeah, candidates should have considering application to the Amoma Kim. Yeah, that's a great question. We actually do not have a minimum of work experience. Um, this current class that actually just started is close to four years as an average, um, but we do have students coming straight out of their undergraduate program who are joining our class. And we have on the flip side, people with 10, 15 years work, of, work experience on their resume. So it definitely, um, ranges, but the average is about four. Um, and to reiterate, there is no minimum. Okay, thank you very much. Please, if you have any question, please feel free to ask. Can yeah, one of your mic can ask or put it in the chat box. Okay, so um, my next question is going to be around um, funding, and then what the as so I would like to ask what how, what's the level of like scholarship prevalence in um, at the Amoma um, and how readily do people um, and students get them um, scholarship um, offers? Yes. Sure. Yeah. Um, so if a student is admitted into the program, they would automatically be considered for a merit scholarship. And the merit scholarship decision is based off of their application. So there's no additional application a student needs to fill out in order to be considered for merit scholarship. Um, and the coverage can be anywhere from 25% to 100% based on the strength of the application. Um, so it is all kind of found out uh, at the same time. So if you're admitted, you would find out while you were admitted if you were offered a merit scholarship and how much you were offered as well. Okay, thank you very much. Shagun, I think you have a question. You can go ahead to ask. Sure, thank you. Hi, Alexandra. Um, thank you for the presentation. It was really insightful. Um, I, I really wanted to, to just uh, hone in on the concentration. Um, I'm very interested in the MBX. I just wanted to understand the dynamics there in terms of uh, funding. Um, so um, 
if I wanted to take, because I have a background in technology or computer science, a requirement in terms of, do I have to pay a separate tuition fee? Uh, what are the dy dynamics around there? Sure, that's a, a very good question. Um, so at DeMore McKim, our tuition fee is $1,640 per credit hour. Um, so if you were to do the, the full program at DeMore McKim, that comes to 90200 as it stands today. Um, there sometimes is uh, a little bit of an increase year to year, um, and we do find that out at the beginning of the year. We haven't seen that yet this year. Um, the, the College of the Computer Science has a little bit of a different tuition rate, um, but they are very close to being the same as us. I believe it's off by maybe $100 or $200, um, but that's very similar. The one thing that I will note is that the bridge program is not eligible for scholarship. Um, it's only the MBA program that would be eligible for, for, for a scholarship. Um, and when I say MBA, I do also include MBA X in that as well. Well, thank you. Thank you for the clarity. Sure. Yeah. And I, I forgot to mention one quick thing when it comes to funding. I just wanted to also highlight that for our corporate residency, it is a paid opportunity. Um, so on average for the six month corporate residency, which again, most of our students participate in, on average, our students are actually making about $33,000. Um, so that's just one added benefit or one added way to kind of subsidize the cost of the program um, that I just wanted to, to quickly highlight. Yeah, and I think I just want to reemphasize that. I'm not sure there are many business schools out there that allow you to do a, three, a six month internship, um, which which is a corporate residency, when you think about Okay. <laughs> yes. So um, I think that's quite amazing and it's important to highlight that for those who are more oriented in getting their MBA and getting straight on to work. I have a question. Right on, Precious. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for the session. Um, my question is still on the corporate residency. So, does that affect the length of the program? So, I believe it's a t if it's a two-year program. If I'm taking a six-month internship, how does that affect um classes that I'm supposed to take as opposed to the three-month um internship? Sure, yeah, so the six month internship is actually baked into the timeline. Um, so it would not affect the, the length of the program. Six months is included in the two year timeline. If you were to take a three month corporate residency, which would just be the summer months, you would actually graduate a semester earlier or a little bit earlier. Um, if you were to do the 12 month option, you would graduate a little bit later. Um, the, the timeline, you would be actually working very closely with your student advisor. Um, because with the 12 month option, there is an option to actually take some courses at night concurrently um, with your, your corporate residency, which would speed it up a little bit. Um, but yes, the six month is included in the two year time frame. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Alexandra. Okay, so my next question is, is centered around um, student involvement in, in clubs and activities so how like how big like how many clubs do we have do you have like a lot of clubs that students can join to develop a leadership and leadership um yeah leadership what would i say yeah to develop yeah the leadership skills basically yeah so um there's two parts to this answer that i'm going to cover um, so the first is that our clubs, we actually reimagined how we are offering clubs at Northeastern at, at, for the full-time MBA program specifically. Um, what we were seeing is that students who signed up for clubs weren't really getting what they wanted out of it. Um, what we saw was that students wanted to have guest speakers and events and, and things like that from the clubs that they were participating in. Um, but because our program is so jam-packed with so much already, um, we have close to 100 networking events within that first academic year. Um, we have intensive classes that our students are participating in, a, a core curriculum that's um, condensed and indefinitely a lot of work within that first semester. We were noticing that students weren't getting what they wanted out of clubs just because they didn't have the time really to put into it. 
Um, so what we did was kind of come up with this idea that um, we would come up with a panel of, or, or a team of students who are responsible for events, for, focusing on topics that our students are really interested in. Um, so taking away the title of the club, um, but giving them what they want out of it. So allowing them to have the, the budget for it and the time for it as well. Um, so focusing on things like FinTech, uh, women in business, um, sustainability, things like that. The topics that our students are actually really um, engaged with and, and very interested with. Um, but having said that, part two is that we actually have some really, really cool um, initiatives on campus that our full-time MBA students can participate in. I'll highlight two very quickly. Um, the first is for our entrepreneurial students. Um, we have a club on campus called IDEA, which is a venture accelerator um, that at this point has raised close to $150 million and has helped start uh, started about 50 businesses. So if you're an entrepreneurial student and have an idea um, that you want to start, this club on campus will help you um, from idea generation through business launch. Uh, our students get paired with a mentor, so somebody who has started a business of their own um, and can help our students when it comes to things like business plans, creating your business plan, funding your business, um, and all the ins and outs of starting your own business. So the entrepreneurial network at Northeastern is immense. We call it a little ecosystem. There's a lot of different clubs and, and um, groups that you can be a part of. Um, and the second thing I'll quickly highlight is our 360 Huntington Fund that our, our full-time MBA students can partake in. Um, this is a mutual fund that's actually led by our full-time MBA students. It's supervised by a faculty member in the finance department, but our students actually get to play with a million dollars, which is bananas to me, um, but very, very cool. Um, they get to decide kind of how um, we buy and sell and, and how we invest this million dollars to grow it. Um, so this is a fund that is led by, a, again, a, a faculty member, but really run by our full-time MBA students. And depending how you participate in that club, um, you can actually get credit hours for participating in, in that. Um, if you are a mentor within our idea club, you can actually get credit hours for that as well. Um, so a very long-winded answer, I apologize, but lots, lots of opportunity at Northeastern. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. So, okay, so I would like to ask if there are, um, if there, there are any opportunities for students to get like, um, international business experience, maybe by traveling to other countries or by taking and um, getting involved with projects with um, other com companies outside um, America. Yes, definitely. And this is something I didn't cover in the presentation. So thank you for, for asking this question. Um, we have two global opportunities that are offered in the first year of our program within the spring semester. Um, I will explain them with a quick caveat that I don't know how COVID is going to impact these opportunities. They may turn into virtual opportunities. Um, I hope by next year that we'll be back in a, um, a safe environment where our students can travel. Um, but the, the opportunity, the first opportunity is what we call a global consulting project, where we actually partner with our, our career, uh, excuse me, our corporate partners. Um, and we ask them, do you have a business problem that our, our students can help solve for? Um, can we offer you free consulting work with some brilliant minds? <laughs> and um, oftentimes our corporate partners will come back and say, absolutely. Um, so what our students will do for a semester is work on a project and be able to present their findings to the senior leaderships at those teams um, and at those companies. So we've sent students to um, places like IBM in India, TKX in London, J and J, Johnson and Johnson in Eastern Europe, just to name a few. Um, so a really great opportunity to put consulting work on your on your resume um, to gain experience, maybe in a topic that you're not familiar with. Um, and if you wow these these companies, um, we've actually seen offers for jobs being uh, placed on the spot. So really, really great opportunity. If you take anything from this, network, network, network. Every opportunity is an opportunity to network, right? Um, so that's, that's one really cool experience. And then the second is an international field study, which is a little bit less project-based and more of an opportunity to travel to another country and really be immersed in their culture, um, learn how business is run, how government affects that, 
um, be introduced to alumni in those countries and partake in a short class run by a faculty member who would join you on that project. Um, so those are our two main global opportunities. Okay, thank you very much. So over the years, um, what industries like have most um, most of your students gone to? Is it tech? Is it consulting? Like which of the industries like see a lot of people going into post MBA? Sure. So because of our location, we've seen a lot of interest within healthcare, within finance, um, marketing. Um, the retail industry, we have some really big uh, retail giants in our backyard as well. Um, so those are kind of our top industries. Supply chain is also really um, popular with our student base as well. Um, those are kind of the, the big industries. Okay, thank you. Of course. Um, okay, so is there opportunity to have one-on-one um, -on -one coaching, um, like coaching like from the career center? Yeah, the student get to have one on one coaching um, opportunities with faculty. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So every student in the program is actually assigned to a career advisor. Um, so that is a, a person who will be your liaison throughout not only finding a corporate residency, but also um, in landing your, your postgraduate employment. So, absolutely, yes. Okay, so I think. Um, okay, so I think that's all I have, and thank you for answering yeah questions. If you have any other questions, please let me know so that or you can ask before we round off this session. Thank you I very much for your time. Okay, go on. Um, hi, Alexandra, thank you for mm -hmm. an insightful presentation. So, um, I have a question concerning okay, so I'm currently a business analyst, right, IT business analyst, who may be considering the MBAX program. But I would also, I would like to ask um, for someone like me who is a business analyst, right, I'm not necessarily a software developer or into um, design or communication. What, what concentration would you advise I, I take? Um, sure. So if you're not looking to do the bridge program for the MBAX computer science, what I typically recommend students do is choose business analytics as one of their two business concentrations in the traditional full time MBA. The reason I say that is because within the business analytics concentration, there are interdisciplinary courses that you can take through the College of Computer Science that do not require prerequisites. Um, so we do have exposure to things like AI and data science through that concentration. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm sorry. Um, and that will allow you to kind of cut down the time of your program from three years to two years um, and get that, that technical computer science um, capability through the traditional full-time MBA. So I think the fact that um, the traditional full-time MBA allows for two interdisciplinary courses, which can both be done through our College of Computer Science, um, is really beneficial to those non-computer science students. Alexandra, thank you very thank much. You. Absolutely. Thank you very much for your time today. And as, as we round up, I just want to chip in one quick question. We all know TAs and GAs, that's graduate assistantship and teaching assistantship are a way for students to manage and keep up with their living expenses. In the MBA program, what is your policy around TAs and GAs for MBA students? Yeah, great question. Um, we do offer grad assistant teaching assistant and research assistant positions on campus. Um, those are positions that you would need to apply to, and we usually see those positions posted in the beginning of the fall semester. Um, so it's not something that you would be um, able to really acquire until you're an enrolled student um, and have access to an NUID, um, which will allow you access to our, our student employment website. But I will say that there are definitely opportunities um, to apply to those positions. TA and, and RA positions, um, I will say, uh, again, I probably sound like a broken record, um, but network <laughs> with your faculty. Um, make sure that you are, are doing well in their class and are communicating with them um, and letting them know that you're interested if they have the funds um, to maybe be their TA or, or RA and that might be 
kind of the foot in the door to that position. But yes, they are available, um, but they are in a, a position that you would need to apply to. Oh, thank you very much for your time. And we do appreciate the application fee waiver. For those who don't feel the attendance list yet, please go ahead and fill the form so we can share this shortly with Alexandra. Thank you very much for your time today. And we hope that you have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much. I hope you all stay safe and healthy. Um, and again, thank you for your time tonight. All right. Bye for now. So guys, um, while, while we thank Alexandra, as we usually have this, there's always an after session where there's just us and you or just you and us, and we get to really delve into some things off the record.